Welcome back to the NPH Hour here on News Talk Saga 960 AM. I'm your host, Jason Tom. So while our first guest on the show has recently transitioned from playing to coaching, our next guest has been the head coach of the Ryerson Rams women's program for almost a decade. Carly Clark has built a perennial OUA championship contender while also playing a key role in the women's high performance program at Canada Basketball. Currently, she serves as an assistant coach to Lisa Tomitis on the senior women's national team who will be using the upcoming Amera Cup to help select their team for the upcoming Olympic Games. Clark has seen the rise of women's basketball firsthand, but has also seen the toll COVID has taken on the momentum that the sport had going for it here at home. Carly Clark, the head coach of the Ryerson University Women's Basketball Program, assistant coach for Canada Basketball's senior women's national team, and currently getting prepared to head to Tampa to start up training camp with that same squad. Coach, a crazy year to say the least. From a leadership perspective, what have you learned from this time about being a basketball coach without having access to the players or the actual game itself? Yeah, loaded first question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's probably so much and, and so much I don't even know the answer to yet because we're, we're still not back at it, right? Um, but I, I think for me during this time, it's been really valuable just to continue to build relationships with our athletes, um, you know, and, and shift the focus and, and find some new ways to define success over the, the course of the year. And, and I think um, emphasize some more foundational pieces that when you're going right into a competitive environment, um, sometimes don't get the attention that, that they probably should realistically. Um, so I think those pieces and how, how you build that in when you do get back into a competitive environment, um, that, that learning still to be discovered, probably. Now, looking at the positives of the year away, what we've seen is the groundswell of support for the WNBA, you know, the vehicle that the sport of women's basketball particularly has become for real social change. So does that give you reason for optimism, looking at the positives coming out of this, that maybe there will be more support, maybe there will be more corporate dollars to step up and, 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 and just fans in the stands of more interest in women's basketball at a post-secondary level? I certainly hope so. I mean, it's been incredibly inspirational to see what uh, the women of the WNBA in particular have done over this past year, and they have impacted and inspired change in a multitude of ways. And, um, you know, I, I think that is filtering down and filtering through to to different levels and certainly our level. And, um, you know, those conversations and actions have been an important part of, I think, what our level has been able to do over this past year while we haven't been able to compete on the court. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully the foundational pieces there will continue to move forward in our sport. And, um, you know, women's basketball is growing and more people are starting to invest. So, um, you know, hopefully WNBA continues to, to demonstrate that I know they'll continue continue to demonstrate that all summer and, and hopefully we can feed off that momentum. And through all this, there's always going to be change. And there was a big change just down the road from you at the university of Toronto, a player, you know, very well. And Tamara Tatum is now the head coach taking over for a legend in Michelle Belanger. Um, you know, how cool is it for you who's seen the basketball at all these different levels to now see, you know, a player that, you know, taking over head coaching position and showing just generally speaking in the U sports level, kind of the transition that is happening at the, at the coaching level. Yeah. Well, first off, super excited for, for Tamara to get the opportunity, um, know how committed to coaching she is, know how successful she was as a player. Um, so for her to bring that, um, you know, knowledge, experience, work ethic, all of those pieces to, to U sports and the OUA, I think is really exciting for our league and, and our, our sport and obviously for the University of Toronto. Um, you know, certainly big shoes to fill with, with Michelle and the, the legend she left. Um, but, you know, if anybody's up for that challenge, Tamara would be, be that for sure. And I think it's so encouraging overall of, um, you know, there's been a number of women's basketball, U sport, coach positions hired in the last um, 15 months, essentially, 
And the majority of those are, are being filled by, by women, by young women, by former players. So um, it's, again, just really encouraging to see that trend and seeing some of the work that's been, um, you know, still really in its infancy, but committed to developing um, young and turning players into coaches and young women into, into coaches is, is paying off. So um, look forward to continuing that investment for sure too. We talked about the state of the WNBA. We've talked about, you know, youth sports now and, and where, you know, the coaching seems to be going. Is there something that needs to push women's basketball over the edge here in Canada or is it just a matter of time is it a WNBA franchise I just know you've seen it at all these different levels what is your core belief right now that's needed to really push women's basketball to the next level yeah well I think you know over the last 25 years we've seen what having the Raptors and for a time there the Grizzlies as well um you know, in Canada has done for, for basketball as a whole. Um, so, you know, we've seen the sport grow men's and women's side, but we still don't have the Canadian pro level, um, you know, of our women and, and women be able to, to compete at the highest level in our country. Like I said earlier, they all have to go somewhere else. Um, and there's incredible opportunities for them around the world. But if we could ever, whether, you know, lots of talk about WNBA expansion and Toronto being in that conversation. I, I truly believe that would be a, a massive piece to, to profile women's basketball in our country. Um, you know, and I think beyond that, it's, it's finding ways to actually invest in women and invest in women first. And, and that's a big challenge. And, um, you know, I think it forces potentially corporations and um, funders to think a little bit differently. Um, but how do we prioritize um, professional women's basketball and, and those types of stages? You know, we've seen the CEBL on the men's side come up and have great success. And that's continued to be a great platform for our men's players. You know, is there a women's equivalency? Is there a women's um, side of that or something that could stand alone that people can really invest in and, and prioritize. So I think there's a couple different ways, exciting conversations happening in some of these spaces. So I'm optimistic about, about what's to come. Last question, just about the Olympics and talking uh, to so many of these women on, on the team. It's just the one thing that they speak about is the Olympics is the biggest dream for them because when they were younger, they didn't get to see the WNBA, for example. And so the Olympics was everything. So your perspective on that of how much this opportunity means to the women in this program and to you yourself. Yeah, well, um, obviously, first, I'm incredibly excited for, for the experience. And it's certainly something that... Um, you know, I've dreamt of for a long time and, and these Olympics will look, look different, but they're still happening. And, and, um, for that to turn into realities and is, is just so exciting. And, um, you know, I spoke to it briefly before, but you know, it's, it's always a challenge for us in Canada with, um, our athletes spread around the world because that's where they're playing and, um, professional opportunities are. So um, compared to a lot of the other countries, it's even harder for our team to come together in person in a normal year, let alone a COVID year. Um, you know, so huge credit to Denise and Lisa for being innovative and finding ways for us to, to stay connected virtually, get the most out of the opportunities that we have. And, um, you know, our women's program has, like you said, always been very closely knit. You know, we have some veterans on the team that that have endured a lot to help our program get to this level. So, um, you know, for some of them to have the potential to go to their second or third Olympics um, and compete for a medal, um, to be part of that journey with them uh, is incredibly exciting. And then some young players up and coming for, you know, with their first shot to go to the Olympics. And there's just something unique about representing your country and and, you know, connecting to the the story that we all have individually and as a group to get to this point um you know i think it's it's really unique and and something that we're proud of again representing those who came before us those who are part of the journey now and 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 the whole country 
coach, whether it's youth sports or Canada basketball, every time you get asked about what it means to you to win games, you always say it's about the joy on the players' faces. You truly do this for others. And I, I think that's uh, such a gift that you give. And, and you know, thank you uh, for taking time here on the NPH Hour today. And, and good luck for the path to the Olympics and getting back on the floor with Ryerson this year. I know you can't wait to get back out there again to see the players be able to really enjoy what this sport gives them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much to you for all you're doing to help promote uh, women's basketball in, in our country and beyond. And um, again, we're just really, really proud to represent uh, everybody that's supporting us. Like I mentioned, Coach Clark has been very much involved with the success that the women's high performance program has seen for the last 10 plus years. Back in 2015, as the head coach of the women's cadet national team, Clark led Canada to their first ever gold medal at the age group level with a squad of players that we will see in the mix for the national team for years to come. That team made history, which was matched two years later by the men's side when Canada's U19 squad won gold at the FIBA World Cup. Grant Shepard was a member of that team. He's also a part of the increased talent at the youth sports level and getting great experience at the pro level with the CEBL. He talks to me about why he chose Canadian post-secondary over the NCAA next on the NPH Hour here on News Talk Saga 960 AM.